So anyway, we have our background on, we have all our settings in here. So if I go ahead and hit this light caps, what that's gonna do is capture that lighting onto our material. And you're also gonna see when we go in here to light cap, you're gonna see when we click on any one of these, it's gonna have light and shadow information on every single one of these lights and is basically capturing it from the image. So if we go over here now and we hit BPR, it's going to light our object as if it was sitting right in that scene. In fact, if you wanna turn the background off and then hit BPR, you're gonna see you're able to render the object as if it was being lit by the scene but without all the scene information with it. Now one thing you're gonna notice about this process is it does send a lot of shadows around your object. You're gonna see we have a shadow going this way and a shadow going this way. And what that is, is from all of these above the horizon line lights are going to be a shadow at 100%. Generally speaking, I just want one shadow from one direction, usually my main light source. You're gonna see my main light source is basically where it's brightest on the shader ball here. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and select this one. Well. What you could do manually is you can select any one of these other lights in here. You can drop the shadow down to zero, but it's kind of tedious to do that. Uh, another thing I should mention is, before we get too far, you're going to need your background on in order to hit this light caps button. And also the samples button is going to determine, if you hover over this, how many lights it gives you in your scene. Right now we're just doing a samples of three, so it gives me eight lights. Four is 16, five is 32. If you turn on this reflect option right here and then hit light caps again, that's going to capture not only your lighting information, but also as we go down here, it'll capture your specular information here. If we turn reflect off and then hit light caps, you're gonna see our specular information isn't quite as detailed. So use this to your advantage if you're doing really shiny materials. In this case, we're kind of doing a matte material, so I'm not too concerned about reflections. And one more thing to keep in mind, if you go over here to your render menu, and underneath your render properties submenu here, you're gonna see right here at the top is a detail slider. If you hold down control, that'll give you more information. This will increase the quality of your render. Right now it's set to three, which I think is fine, but you can decrease and increase um, basically the map size for your light environment maps and the quality of your light cap creation from a background image. So again, you can crank this up if you want to. I'm gonna go ahead and keep it at three for now, but I just wanna have that as an option for you if you're doing this type of rendering. Now, instead of going through these lights and you know keeping one on for shadows and then going through the rest of these and then turning your shadows down to zero, what you can use is a script. And I'm gonna put a link to this thread in the description of this video, but basically you're gonna download this turnoffshadows.txt and you're gonna drag that text file into your C and on Windows machine, C program files, Pixelogic, ZBrush 2018, Z startup, macros, miscellaneous, Go ahead and take this turn off shadows text. I'm gonna go ahead and move that in here. And now if I go back to my macros here and hit reload all macros, now you're gonna see I have a turn off shadows button. So basically what I'm gonna do is select my main light source that I want to have casting shadows. And the reason we're doing this again, if I turn my background off and hit BPR, it's casting a lot of different shadows in a lot of different directions. So essentially what I wanna do is go in here to the uh, light menu, select the one light for the main light source here, and then I'm going to go to my macro, I'm going to say turn off shadows, and that's going to go through my lights and turn off all the shadows, or turn my shadow property down to zero for all of them except for the one I have selected. So now if I go through and select these shadows, you're going to see this shadow is set to zero except for the one we had selected, which is still at 100. If we go over here to BPR render, Number one, it's gonna render faster because it's not having to render a lot of different types of shadows. Now it's gonna render a shadow from that main direction. Now you are in control of where the shadow is gonna fall. I can take this light right here and I can just click and drag it just like when we were doing our lighting before. So if I wanna change this light direction, I can simply click and move that light. BPR render. And we still have all of the different rendering options available to us in the previous video. So if I go over here to the render tab here, you can go to your render properties, we are rendering shadows and ambient occlusion. So here's our, I'm holding down shift to open these submenus all at once. So if you want to turn down our shadow strength, we can turn that down. 